Hey guys, how are you? So somebody asked me whether the recent big layoffs at Meta and Twitter and other tech companies, I'm sure, well, the freezing, I think Google froze their new hirings, Apple froze their new hirings, whether this means that's it for programming, that's it for development, game over, time to quit. Short answer is no. I've seen this a few times. I've been coding since 94. Yeah, you get a bunch of layoffs and people just migrate to different opportunities. You know, this brings up a few things. First of all, if you haven't watched my video on FU Money, you should watch the FU Money video. It's very important. FU Money is just emergency money so that you don't have to worry about being laid off. I recommend uh, six months minimum. I used to say a year, sometimes I said two years. Depends on the circumstance. If you're a freelancer, I'd say two years. If you're working for a company and you're you're in uh, you're in a sweet spot, you're in the zone in terms of your skill set, then I say okay, maybe six months. If you're not in the zone, maybe a year. If you don't know what the zone is in terms of your coding skills, then you're not in the zone. So uh, yes, back to Meta. Yeah, Meta fired a whole bunch of people, not necessarily because Meta. Uh, is, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's not because the whole job market has collapsed and everything is collapsing. It's just as normal. There's an expectation of a slowdown in the economy. Not that Meta was anywhere near monetization, as far as I can tell. Um, so what do they do? You know, the stock dropped by like, whatever, 70% or so. Uh, so they're cutting costs for now until the economic situation improves. This is all psychology, by the way. Meta is still making a ton of money, although a touch less. You got to understand about the stock market. It's very fragile in the sense that as soon as they see a little weakness in a particular stock, a little bit of fragility, even though it's making a ton of money, they, when the growth curve starts to flatten out, Growing, meaning making more money. The curve is up. Flat means it's not changing. It's not accelerating so quickly. When that happens, all the Wall Streeters run for the run for the exits like their hair's on fire. It's normal. Meta's still making a lot of money. Now, that being said, with regards to the Meta project, it's very ambitious. And Zuckerberg, though, he knows how to run a business, and he, but he's only had one business. And that's Facebook. And um, so he got, it was his first business. And he rolled like double 100s, you know, if you played any role-playing games, you know, that's like a very rare. He got very lucky off, off the top. He's a good operator, smart guy, no question. But thing is, is he's, he's approached Meta based on... Um, the entrepreneurial feeling. Now, he had tremendous luck with Facebook, but I think, you know, one of the new mistakes entrepreneurs make is they put they go all in on an idea without too much evidence on gut feelings. That sometimes works out. Most of the time it doesn't. That's why eight out of 10 businesses fail within the first few years. So Meta, I don't know. I, uh, I got the Oculus. I like the Oculus. But um, it's not something I wouldn't necessarily jump in hard, though you may have to jump in hard in that space. So here's my Oculus, right? This is great. I bought this for one reason only, to do the boxing game. The virtual boxing game, uh, what's it called? Uh, King of the Ring, I think it is. I haven't done it in a while. But King of the Ring, uh, it's like a boxing simulation. And... It's kind of like, I'd say maybe 65, 70%, it feels like real thing. I used to do a lot of sparring back in the day for real. So this is kind of great exercise. I bought it strictly for that, but still a little heavy and bulky. Anyhow, so all that to say, I, I like the whole idea behind, uh, you know, the whole metaverse and that kind of stuff. I like it at least... To a certain extent, I don't know if it's going to have the broad application that Zuckerberg thinks it might. I'm not confident of it, in all honesty. But who knows? Who knows? Who knows? But the point is, he went in big time. And uh, so he's just pulling back uh, to be prudent 
uh, and to slow roll the development, which I think is a wise move. Uh, Twitter, of course, was, uh, I don't think it was ever profitable. So Musk uh, is just pulling back because it's now his money and, well, and his investors' money. So they got to pull back and see if they can make that work. Uh, that's not uncommon in any business where you see big expansion and then they pull back to uh, clean it up. Then they, they move forward again. Apple did that. Apple, when Steve Jobs came back in, I think it was the late 90s, he came back to Apple because Apple was about to go bankrupt and they had made the same mistakes. Too big expansion, all kinds of crappy products and they were about to go bankrupt. Microsoft bailed them out, by the way. And then Steve Jobs came in and he cleaned the house. He got rid of this, got rid of that, got rid of this, rid of that, rid of that. So yeah, so a lot of people got fired. Uh, but look where Apple is today, the biggest company in the world. So it's normal. How does it affect uh, developers? Again, you just, as I said, as a matter of uh, safety, you should have your FU money saved up. If you don't now, start saving like a mad person so that you have that buffer. Uh, if you're still learning and you keep learning because there's still going to be lots of jobs for you, maybe not for the fangs. And I've said for several years now, why would you not want to necessarily work for the fangs? It can be a good thing. But understand, when you work for a fang, a fang, if you don't know, is the big tech companies. is Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, and Google. Although I think they have to change the fang name because, uh, you know, Netflix has cut jobs. Uh, Facebook is now meta, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, one of the aspirational targets, if you were for a lot of people jumping into the coding game, was to go work for fang because you see the big salaries. Yes. There are big salaries at the fangs, but there are big salaries in many companies. The thing is, though, working for a big fang, I think the average person works there for two years. Do you, so you want to base your whole career or all your aspirations based on an average career span of two years? Mm, I don't know. I say just work on becoming a great developer with great soft skills and interpersonal skills and you will be able to find jobs. So all those people being laid off, I assume, I assume they're top-notch people, and I assume they have good interpersonal skills. That's why they got the job in the first place. They'll be able to find other jobs uh, fairly quickly, I would imagine. Uh, yeah, so there you go. So I wouldn't be too concerned. This is a short-term thing. When economies go down, people do invest in tech to save money. So they're not going to be doing speculative things like Meta. Uh, that will be pulled back a little bit. But they're going to be doing uh, nuts and bolts type of programming like web development, e-commerce, and so forth. Uh, branding, marketing, web-related stuff. It's all interwoven now these days. So I wouldn't be too concerned about it, especially if you have your FU money, you sleep well at night, especially if you have an open mind with regards to the technologies you're going to work with. As I've been saying for a long time, you don't want to be a technology zealot. You want to be open-minded about what it is you use. And in fact, in time, when you become advanced intermediate to advanced level developer, you will think of the programming languages and frameworks as secondary in terms of your skill set. I am a software developer and I am a software developer who's capable, so I'll use any language, any framework, any libraries that will get the job done. I don't identify as a Java programmer. I don't identify as a JavaScript programmer. I don't identify as a Python programmer. I identify as a programmer who chooses Java, Python, C Sharp, C++, Rust, whatever language is best to get the job done. With the one exception is Ruby. Never use Ruby, whatever you do. So in summary, should you be worried about the tech downturn? No, but I've given you some mindsets, some strategies to consider, to implement in your own life. So when this blip in the economic situation passes, you will uh, be in a great position moving forward and you won't have to worry. And one last thing, as I teach in my Lizard Wizard course, our brains are literally programmed. They're designed to overemphasize potential threats. 
Think about it from a evolutionary point of view. If your Uncle Steph who walks through the woods always happy, and when I see a bush rustle, if I'm just like in a state of constant bliss and I never consider that that might be a predator, a tiger, or a lion ready to jump out and kill me, Uncle Steph, you know, 100,000 years ago, ah, it's nothing. Ah, Uncle Steph might get killed. Now, maybe a one in a thousand chance or one in a hundred thousand chance. I don't know what the percentage is, but, right? On the other hand, you have another Uncle Steph, Uncle Nick. He's walking through the woods and he sees a rustling bush. He goes, ah, and he runs. So chances are that rustling bush was not dangerous. But that one time when it was dangerous, scaredy cat Uncle Nick went running like a chicken, but he didn't get killed. So he was allowed to reproduce, and he had little mini Uncle Nicks. And soon Uncle Nicks spread out across the world, and there's a bunch of scaredy cat Uncle Nicks running around. But they're still alive. Whereas all the super brave Uncle Stephs who did, they didn't pay attention to anything, they got killed by the lion every thousand times, once every thousand times. So that's a weird explanation. But, you know, through ev evolution, it's favored the people who are a little bit more wary of potential threats, right? Because no matter what happens, uh, if you get killed, you can't do anything else in life, right? So there you go. So our brains, as a function of evolution, have become hypersensitive to potential threats, some of us more than others. There's always variations within a uh, sample group. And uh, so you're probably wired to perceive potential threats that will never materialize. Think about it. Think about your own life, all the times that you were worried about something and nothing ever happened, right? So remember that. If you're a little scared about the economy, what's going to go on, remember that our brains are literally wired to overemphasize potential threats, threats that most of the time don't materialize. So there you go. I hope that helps. Bye-bye.